How do you feed the world without starving the planet? I think about this question every day. And the answer is going to be less synthetic and more human. It's using technology to build a stronger, deeper connection to the ecosystem. We need innovation from seed to sensors to satellites, all working to change global agriculture from a climate change contributor to a climate change solution. And this pursuit starts from above. Well, at Planet, we want to save the world. Planet was founded by three NASA scientists who strongly believed that we could use space for people to live healthier, more secure lives. But they knew that to do that, satellites had to become smaller, much cheaper, and had to be updated more often. Fast forward to today, and we're a publicly traded company that has more than 200 satellites in orbit. We have an archive that's about 2,000 images deep for every place on the planet, whether it's along a coastline, in a forest, in a grassland, or in farmland. Before space travel, it would have been hard for a farmer to imagine how satellite imagery would be an essential tool. Today, it can reveal almost in real time changes down to the field level. And that information lets us know how the Earth is changing to understand the features and the details of those places. The moisture in the soil, for example, the color of the crop, is it beginning to yellow just a tiny bit? And those things help us to know exactly how much water or fertilizer to add and when. And this is a big deal. Because the sooner a farmer knows they have an issue, the sooner they can make small, targeted steps to fix that issue. Think of it like applying crop protection to an individual plant instead of an entire field. I think of satellite imagery as an up-to-the-minute dynamic farmer's almanac, specifically for your land. Whether you're a farmer in Kenya or Nebraska or New Zealand, you can access data and imagery to make your operation more sustainable and more efficient. I've been to nearly 20 different countries in my job and the more I travel, the more I realise that the farmers are the same worldwide. I don't think I've met a, a farmer who is ever deliberately trying to harm the environment. You know, all of them want to be good stewards of the, uh, the environment and look after their farms. We may have unintended consequences of, of how we farm and it's a matter of recognising those and starting to improve them. What we need to do is become more efficient with what we're doing and that means better use of water, uh, better use of nutrients, um, minimising uh, what we, we use in terms of chemical applications to the soil. In many parts of the world, we're just seeing uh, hotter, drier weather, uh, more floods, longer um, periods of very wet or very dry. So whether or not you're a believer in climate change, I think the more important thing for most farmers is climate adaptation. What are we going to do to manage our farms to, to, to achieve what, what we want to do? So we need to work out how we can collect data, analyse data, on a real-time basis to make good decisions. Data is the flashlight you use in the, in the room to see where you're going. Now you can just stumble around in the room and figure things out by trial and error, or you can actually use the flashlight, which helps you figure out where to go. So I explain to people that data is what illuminates and gives light to the things we do so we can do them more precisely and more predictably. When I started my farming career and, and working with farmers, we used to go out with a, a, a notebook and take some information around the growth rates and the crop yields and the soil temperature 
and note that down and then run it through a, a spreadsheet or some sort of uh, basic analysis to say, hey, this is what we think you should do. The 21st century version of those notepads happens in a tablet with a tool like FieldView. When a farmer stands in a field or even from half a world away, they can see all the ups and downs of that portion of land. This makes every decision more informed. And in this case, being more informed can lead to less impact on the land, water, and air. I see the potential to really understand the state of our planet, whether our biosphere is healthy, whether individual species are flourishing or facing risks, and we're able to then use that information to make decisions. Science is about asking big questions. Data science is about using research and technologies like satellites to help us understand how we can answer those big questions. But the smaller picture, the on the ground picture, the under the leaves picture, this is just as necessary and just as disruptive to pull off. I think if we start farming at the square meter or square inch level, all of a sudden it becomes so much more powerful in, in what we can achieve. Innovators in our research labs have brought a small digital camera technology called Magic Trap to the market. Magic Trap is basically a solar-powered digital camera that takes pictures at regular intervals of insects that visit it. If uh, we see uh, an insect starting to um, invade that field, but not that field, all of a sudden we can ap apply some treatment to here compared to over here where we don't need to touch it. So all of a sudden we, we might be using less product to achieve the same outcome. So I think it's hugely exciting and uh, we're just scratching the surface of what that could achieve. If you think about some of the most important things we can do as people, one is making sure we all have nutritious food to eat. Some of the work I've done with smallholder farmers has been incredibly rewarding because the difference for them in a, a good yield or a bad yield is simply the, the ability to put food on the table to survive. And the second thing is ensuring that we've got a planet that's healthy for the generations that will come behind us. Today, I have hope because I know that we can see and we can measure and thus we can manage for a planet that is more sustainable and resilient, even under the threat of climate change. If we can harness the, these data sources, we're going to see, I think, the next wave of farming transformation come through. This is just the continued evolution, like every other aspect of our life. You will have more data science, more computers that allow you to do things even more precisely, which is, I think, what we all want. We want to be able to have agriculture be not just more productive, but even more sustainable than it is today.